welcome back students today we will be talking about the second module that is the fields of psychology and we are going to talk about pure and applied branches of psychology the main objectives in today's module are to understand what is pure and applied research in psychology then we will talk about the difference between the theoretical and applied branches of psychology we will also talk about the different theoretical branches as well as the applied branches of psychology and uh, we will also talk in some emerging branches of psychology which are currently upcoming psychologists are interested in behavior and the processes related to behavior and they engage themselves often in research practice as well as teaching some research is in basic or pure research in certain fields of psychology pure research has no immediate application to personal or social problems and has therefore been characterized as research for its own sake the fields here the fields related to this are theoretical fields pure research is ignited by the enthusiasm to know and understand it paves the way for future applications for example pure research on learning done by behaviorists on pigeons rats monkeys early in the 20th century was helpful in today's schools as well as in the education system the principles of learning extracted from here are useful today so pure research into the workings of the brain and nervous system also helped in dealing with several problems several cognitive disorders several cognitive problems and on the other hand psychologists also engage in applied research which aims to find solutions to personal or social problems by applying often the findings and principles of pure research whatever learning principles have been uh, identified are now utilized in the same line branches of psychology may be divided into theoretical and applied branches or pure and applied branches so let us talk about the theoretical and applied branches of psychology briefly theoretical branches are concerned with general principles and theoretical models of behavioral phenomena they explain the behavior which occurs in various environmental contexts applied branches of psychology are concerned with the solution of practical psychological problems of different life situations in various environmental contexts it they may be socially different contexts there may be environmentally different contexts several contexts theoretically acquired body of knowledge in psychology is applied to solve the problems of related areas of human activities cognitive cognitive affective areas some of the theoretical branches of psychology let us now talk about them for example general psychology abnormal psychology social psychology developmental psychology physiological psychology experimental psychology comparative psychology and certain others on the other hand some of the applied branches of psychology which use the principles that i have talked about in theoretical branches include educational psychology clinical psychology industrial psychology medical psychology criminal psychology legal psychology engineering psychology and many others so many branches have come up some of these though not all of them some of them i try to discuss in the following section and also more if not exactly what i have just now mentioned let us start with one of the very important branches cognitive psychology what does cognitive psychology do it investigates mental processes involved in acquisition storage manipulation and transformation of information received from the environment along with its use and communication the major cognitive processes are attention perception memory reasoning problem solving decision making 
and language. In order to study these cognitive processes, psychologists conduct experiments in laboratory settings. This field, this cognitive psychology field uses sophisticated research methods including reaction time, brain imaging and several other advanced methods to study memory, language and thinking of humans. Some of them also follow what is called an ecological approach. What is an ecological approach? It is an approach which focuses on the environmental factors to study cognitive processes in a natural setting. Cognitive psychologists often collaborate with neuroscientists as well as the computer scientists because it has to be portrayed. Now let us move on to the next branch biological psychology. It focuses on the relationship between behavior and the physical system including the brain and the rest of the nervous system, the immune system and the genetics. Biological psychologists often collaborate with neuroscientists again like cognitive psychologists but they also collaborate with zoologists, anthropologists evidently because they want to study the progression. This field examines the physiological basis of behavior in animals and humans by studying the functioning of different brain areas and the effects of those like hormones and neurotransmitters on behavior. So essentially the biological basis is studied over here. With this we move on to the next branch that is neuropsychology. This neuropsychology has emerged as a field of research where psychologists as well as neuroscientists together are working in order to understand certain issues related to psychology as well as neurology. Researchers are studying the role of neurotransmitters or chemical substances which are responsible for neural communication in different areas of the brain and therefore they are associated with mental functions or psychological functions as well. They do their research on people with normal functioning brain as well as on people with damaged brain by following advanced technologies like EEG, PET and fMRI about which you will study in your senior semesters. The next branch is behavioral neuroscience. See that I am associating it with the biological psychology and neuropsychology. This behavioral neuroscience is the subfield of psychology which mainly examines how the brain and nervous system as well as other biological processes determine behavior of an individual. Thus neuroscientists consider how our bodies influence our behavior. The next branch is developmental psychology. This studies the changes physical, cognitive, social or emotional which occur throughout the lifespan from conception to old age. The primary concern of developmental psychologists is how we become what we are. For many years the major emphasis was on child and adolescent development but today an increasing number of psychologists and developmental psychologists especially show strong interest in adult development as well and also in aging that is why we said throughout the lifespan and they focus on biological, sociocultural and environmental factors that influence psychological characteristics such as intelligence, cognition, emotion, temperament, morality as well as social relationships. Developmental psychology a very important field studies how people grow and change from the moment of conception throughout their lifespan till death. They attempt to sort out the influences of heredity and the environment on development of an individual. Let us now move on to personality psychology. This focuses on the consistency in people's behavior over a period of time and the traits that differentiate one person from another. Please remember the subject matter of psychology is individual differences. So personality psychologists identify and measure human traits and determine influences on human thought processes, 
feelings and behavior. They are particularly concerned with issues such as anxiety, aggression, sexual orientation, gender roles and others. Let us now move on to the social psychology. It explores how people are affected by their social environments, how people think about and influence others. Social psychologists are interested in such topics such as attitudes, conformity and obedience to authority, interpersonal attraction, helpful behavior, prejudice, aggression, social motivation, intergroup relations, group dynamics and many many others. This field examines people's interactions with other people. Social psychologists are concerned with the nature and causes of individuals thoughts, feelings and behavior in social situations. Social psychologists tend to focus on social influences and other factors related to the social contexts. We will now move on to cross-cultural and cultural psychology. This examines the role of culture in understanding behavior, thought as well as emotion. It assumes that human behavior is not only a reflection of human biological potential but also a product of culture. Therefore, behavior should be studied in its socio-cultural context is what this branch says. Culture influences human behavior in many ways and also in varying degrees. Hence, this branch studies an individual in the backdrop of the culture. Let us move on now to environmental psychology. This studies the interaction of physical factors such as temperature, humidity, pollution and natural disasters on human behavior. The influence of physical arrangement of the workplace for example on the health of an individual, the emotional state and the interpersonal relations all these are investigated. Current topics of research for example in this field are the extent to which disposal of waste, population explosion, conservation of energy, efficient use of community resources are associated with and are functions of human behavior. All these are studied. Environmental psychologists study the ways that people and the environment both natural environment as well as man-made environment influence one another. Now comes an applied branch which is health psychology. It focuses on the role of psychological factors for example be it stress or anxiety or any other in the development, prevention and treatment of illness and also considers the biological and social factors. Health psychologists for example study the effects of stress on health problems such as headaches and other non-communicable diseases. Health psychologists are concerned with understanding how biology, behavior as well as the social situation influence the health and illness of an individual in addition to the psychological factors. Some of the areas of interest for a health psychologist are stress and coping, the relationship between psychological factors as well as the health of an individual, patient doctor relationship and ways of promoting health enhancing factors. Health psychologists also guide clients toward healthier behavior and healthier behavior patterns such as exercising and quitting smoking. Let us move on to another applied branch of psychology that is clinical psychology. This deals with causes treatment and prevention of different types of psychological disorders such as anxiety, depression, eating disorders and chronic substance abuse. The focus is on assessment, diagnosis, causes and treatment of mental disorders. Please note that a clinical psychologist will be trained in assessment and diagnosis of different psychological disorders. Clinical psychologists help people with psychological disorders adjust to the demands of life. They evaluate problems through procedures and assessment processes like interviews and standard psychological 
tests, diagnostic tests. They help clients resolve their problems and change certain self-defeating behavioral patterns. Let us now move on to counseling psychology very much belongs to helping the normals adjust with their daily lives. Counseling psychology is a related area and counseling aims to improve everyday functioning of an individual by helping people solve their problems in daily living and cope more effectively with challenging situations. Counseling psychologists like clinical psychologists also use interviews and certain tests to understand their clients problems. Their clients typically have adjustment problems but not serious psychological disorders or problems like the clinical psychologists or psychiatrists deal. Thus, the work of counseling psychologists does not differ much from that of a clinical psychologist, but counseling psychologist works in dealing with less serious problems in normal daily life, which cannot be termed as disorders. Counseling psychologists help people who have adjustment problems, it may be marital, it may be social or behavioral. Now let us move on to one more applied branch that is industrial and organizational psychology. This deals with workplace behavior and it focuses on both the employees, the workers and as well as the organizations which employ them. It is a larger framework. Industrial and organizational psychology applies psychology to the workplace with the goal of improving the performance and well-being of employees. Industrial and organizational psychologists are concerned with training employees, improving work conditions and developing criteria for selecting employees and maintaining their motivation. Now coming to the educational psychology which is the next applied branch. Educational psychology studies how people of all ages learn. Educational psychologists primarily help develop instructional methods and materials used to train people both in the educational settings as well as in a work setting. They are also concerned with research on issues of relevance for education, counseling as well as learning problems. Educational psychologists specialize in the study of teaching and learning. They are trained in theory and research methods, but not in the diagnosis or treatment of learning problems. Educational psychologists like school psychologists, they attempt to facilitate learning, but they usually focus on course planning and instructional strategies and methods for a school system rather than on individual children. Educational psychologists research issues such as how learning is affected by psychological factors such as motivation and intelligence, socio-cultural factors such as poverty and acculturation and teachers. This brings us now to most important branch related to educational psychology but specific in itself which is school psychology. It is a related field and school psychology focuses on designing programs which promote the intellectual, social and emotional development of children. These children include those with special needs. They try to apply knowledge of psychology in a school setting. They may assess the children's psychological and learning problems and develop certain programs which are important to minimize the impact of these problems. Thus, school psychologists are employed by school systems to identify and assist students who have problems that interfere with their regular learning. They help schools make decisions about placement of students in special classes wherever necessary, whenever necessary. One more important field of application is sports psychology. This once again applies psychological principles to improve sports performance by enhancing their motivation and sports psychology is a relatively new field but is gaining a lot of acceptance and importance worldwide. This field studies the psychological aspects of sports behavior. The goal is to understand 
the psychological factors that influence performance in sports including the role of exercise and team interactions as well. Sports psychologists help athletes concentrate on their performance and not on the emotions or crowd and they use cognitive strategies to enhance their performance and avoid succumbing under pressure. It is the cognition and it is the performance which is important and not the emotion what the training is about. Now this brings us to the next field that is forensic psychology. Forensic psychologists apply psychological principles to understand the behavior of judges, attorneys, courtroom juries and others in the criminal justice system. You see the legal aspects over here. They deal with legal matters such as whether a defendant is sane, whether he or she has committed a crime and forensic psychologists may also explore the issues of psychologically ill offenders and analyze those offenders behavior and mental processes. They may conduct some research on uh, matters ranging from evaluation of eyewitness testimony to the methods of interrogation. This brings us to a discussion on other important emerging branches of psychology. There are several branches today which probably I have not explained in the previous section so far dealt with. The interdisciplinary focus of research as well as application of psychology has led to the emergence of several fields and varied areas like what is called aviation psychology, space psychology, military psychology, rural psychology, engineering psychology, managerial psychology, community psychology, psychology of women and political psychology to name a few. Each of these are very important fields to reckon with because they target specific areas which have not been covered when a general field like social psychology or personality psychology cannot go into the depths of functioning. So specific fields have to be chosen and thus several fields have emerged and are emerging. So in summary today we have talked about what is pure research and applied research, theoretical as well as applied research. We talked about what are theoretical branches and how they differ from applied branches. We said theoretical branches propose the fundamental principles based upon which applications can be determined and applications are done through the research and then the fields which talk about these principles, theoretical principles which are applied in the real time situations and in real life are called applied branches. Several theoretical branches as well as applied branches have been discussed today and from here we will move on to the next session in the next class.